give a child long enough that their well-being's taken care of, that they've had time on the land to feel engaged and enlivened, that they start to see the relationships between things, there is nothing that they would like to do more than to come and talk to you about the stories that they've had and the adventures they've had. And so that's why I put this moment of expression with that moment of passing, because that's when kids give, do that give back. And they want to tell you everything that they found through that day. In uh, Europe, in Italy, they say uh, environment is the third teacher. Here at the uh, York Region Nature Collaborative at uh, Lake St. George Field Center, we've been talking about land as our first teacher. We say, uh, from a Anishinaabe perspective, we say land is first because Mother Earth is first. She was here first and we were here last. Do you want to um, introduce yourself? So um, my name is uh, Diane Cashin and uh, my ancestors came as settlers from uh, Europe to escape persecution, settled in Montreal, and eventually we made our way, um, my family, to, um, to Toronto. And um, I live very close to this wonderful land, Lake St. George, which is part of the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. And it's been a honor and a privilege to have access to this land to um, as an early childhood educator and as an early childhood education uh, retired professor to be able to make this land accessible to the early years but in our work together is to make this land also accessible to the indigenous community and and giving them opportunity to reconnect to the land and um, i'm feeling very very grateful for this opportunity today to do this filming and with my friends Hopi and Johnny. My English name is uh, Johnny Moore. Um, my spirit name is uh, translated into English as Eagle's Calling, and I'm of the Turtle Clan. And, and I'm so happy and fortunate to be a part of this project for the early years and have meeting Diane, you know, and uh, uh, Hopi and Diane ha had a vision that, uh, that brought them together, which, he, which then and, and brought me into the situation. And, in regards to creating a physical structure for uh, the early years projects. So anyways, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, miigwech, miigwech. Nanabojo, gajanane nishnikas, wabajeshi dodem gaye. Hopi Level Martin is my English name. I'm Lenny Lenape, Britain and European. I was born on the western edge of Massachusetts along the Housatonic River and uh, came to this territory of De Garanto, the sacred territory of the Wendat the Tobacco Nations, the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe Confederacy when I was really young and it's in this territory that I'm claimed by uh, Ojibwe Martin clan. It's Shi. And where my name was given, which is uh, Gajanane, kind man. Um, within that uh, Martin clan, my responsibility is as Shkabewis, which is a ceremonial helper and messenger uh, to my auntie, who is an Ojibwe, tra Ojibwe traditional teacher. And so the teachings that I'm sharing and the perspective that I'm sharing is from that Anishinaabek place and uh, within that territory of the Anishinaabe people. So the concept that uh, I wanted to share with you today is called uh, land is our first teacher. And we say land is first is because Mother Earth is first. She was here first. Uh, she gives us everything that we need to survive. And um, it's because of her that we're here. And so um, 
it's the lessons that she gives us every day through all of the four seasons uh, that I wanted to talk to you about today as they relate to um, the early years. In particular, here in Ontario, um, it's called the Four Foundations of uh, How Does Learning Happen, which is Ontario's pedagogy for the early years. And so uh, the Anishinaabek worldview um, sees that according to the seasons. And so this whole place that you see here um, is a wigwam built uh, by my, my friend Johnny and I um, that embodies those four seasons. And uh, right now we've got these uh, flaps up so that we can be out here in this winter time uh, and comfortable and having a fire. Um, but all of these walls can come down so that we're closest to our Mother Earth as it warms up into spring and into summer. And um, so that we can have the, our ceremonies here. But also that the word wigwam means a home. And it's a home in the bush. And so that we, the little ones can come in and have a safe, cozy place um, out in the bush. Uh, to learn about uh, traditional ways, but also to, um, to play and to... Uh, have fun. With the way we built this wigwam uh, tells a story of those four seasons and so I'm going to uh, get up and walk you around to some of those basic teachings. So each of these uh, posts here uh, have a name and so this post here is that moment of passing and that's connected to that mystery and that's colored black and that connects with the uh, that spring equinox. And this post over here is green and that connects to birth and that birth from Mother Earth and that's why it's colored green and that's that moment of summer solstice. And at this post over here is red, the color of blood and that post is uh, symbolic of movement and of that change at the fall equinox. And this one is the post of relationship. And so those four um, intermediate directions always stay the same. Birth, movement, relationship, and passing are the ways that Nishnabek described that uh, life cycle or that growth cycle. And everything from the tiniest seed to the human beings um, all grow in that way. We all have our birth. We all come into movement. We all have relationships. And we all have that moment of passing where we give back. And if we consider those four things and those four, uh, within those four directions, that can give us a hint of how we can move through the seasons in a good kind way. So I'm just going to go and now show how these four, uh, these four moments can connect with what's called the four foundations of how does learning happen. In our pedagogy in Ontario, they have these four uh, descriptions that uh, Diane probably can explain a lot better than I, but the, uh, without these four conditions, learning doesn't happen. And this is what's been found by uh, non-Indigenous science and Western research. And the challenge is, is that these things apply, are applying currently to everybody in Ontario, um, but they haven't been really thought of from an Indigenous perspective. And so, what I, th I noticed was that these um, principles of the seasons and these four posts can be related to those things. So if we think about Mother Earth, who's responsible for all of our, uh, our well-being and everything uh, that we have to live, without her, we would never survive. And so I put well-being with that moment of birth, because without that and without Mother Earth, we could never be. And then as we travel through this southern direction, we think about movement and the most engaging things for little kids is to be able to move their bodies out in the land and to play outside. And so I put engagement over here so that it lines up with that teaching of movement. And as we travel around, I put this um, concept of belonging with relationships here. And these are relationships that go far beyond just uh, physical relationships, but that we also have to have a relationship to spirit. And spirit's not talked about very much in, 
especially in Ontario's uh, mainstream society, yet it's an essential part of Nishnabek way. Without spirit, we, we believe we're spirit beings on a physical journey. And so in order for a Nishnabek uh, child to feel that sense of belonging, they would have to be able to experience that and have a relationship to that. And that's the significance of that sacred fire and of those sacred medicines. And finally, if you give a child long enough that their well-being is taken care of, that they've had time on the land to feel engaged and enlivened, that they start to see their relationships between things, there is nothing that they would like to do more than to come and talk to you about the stories that they've had and the adventures they've had. And so that's why I put this moment of expression with that moment of passing. Because that's when kids give, do that give back. And they want to tell you everything that they found through that day. And when they talk about those stories and they have a kind, caring adult to listen to them, and somebody responds to them and they have that uh, serve and return and that relationship, then they get excited and they can't wait to show you the next, the next day. And so you have like a little seed that if they were to come back to that same place again, they would uh, be able to tell you that much more of a story and that you, they keep traveling around and around through well-being, engagement, belonging, expression. And so this way of moving like this is moves in harmony with the seasons, in harmony with the earth, in harmony with the sun. And that is the essence of Nishnavik methodologies. Everything goes in a circle. And so what if we consider these foundations, instead of fixed points, we consider them in a movement so that it gives us a method for approaching our, our little ones and uh, helping them learn in harmony with the earth rather than uh, in obstruction to it. And that's what we've been thinking about uh, together uh, with this concept of land as our first teacher, is what can we learn from Mother Earth? And um, how can we learn to live a good life, which is Mishnabic way of a good beginning or a good foundation.